Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am Peter Yorsi, the Toronto Website Developer. And in this fourth video tutorial on Drupal 8, I'm going to start uh, looking more at developing a site with you, uh, thanks to the great suggestion by Daniel Pickering, which is to look at creating a site where we can sell images. So combining uh, some, uh, you know, role-based permission selling with Drupal Commerce, uh, combined with building out a site for new users that have never used Drupal, um, and those who are new to Drupal 8. So before we do that, you know, I'm over at torontowebsitedeveloper.com. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series as I develop them. Uh, each sale goes to help me to continue to develop these, keep them free, keep them frequent. So I greatly appreciate all the support. They're only $20. The more you buy, the more you save. And if you can't afford the $20, but you do want to help out, please just leave a thumbs up or a comment on YouTube. Both are greatly appreciated. Uh, they help give me feedback on the tutorials to improve them, but they also help to promote them to new users. All that said, why don't we get down to work? Um, if you, you know, notice here, I'm just on my D8 sandbox. Um, as I mentioned, this is the fourth video tutorial in this series. It took a bit of a, a hiatus from it because I wasn't sure where to go with it. But uh, if you're not familiar with it, in those first couple of video tutorials, I covered downloading uh, Drupal, setting up your server, and then also setting up Drush. So that's where I'm at now. Uh, Drupal's come to release candidate two, so that's what I'm using here. So there's still potential, some bugs could be worked out or might encounter some, but hopefully it won't be the case. In this video tutorial, what we're gonna do is take a look at content types, and we're gonna set those up. There's really not a whole lot of change here from Drupal 7. So if you're familiar with them from Drupal 7, uh, you can follow along very quickly skimming. Uh, there's only one thing really to note, and that's how to set up private files in uh, Drupal 8, which is a little bit different from Drupal 7. So with all that said, why don't we go ahead and get started? Uh, you'll see D8 provides you this nice toolbox, they got, or toolbar, they got rid of the, um, what I thought was horrendous overlay. Um, and kind of streamline some things. So now we can click on structure. Again, it's no admin menu if you're familiar with Drupal 7. Uh, admin menu is a JavaScript dropdown. I'm not even sure if it's available in Drupal 8 yet. But anyways, click on structure. We're going to go to content types. If you're not familiar with content types, essentially what they are, uh, you're brand new to Drupal, um, they're going to be kind of like your different types of content that you'll have on your site. So if you think about if you have a blog, but then you also add uh, video tutorials like I do, you might have a blog content type and then a video tutorial content type. And the reason why you have two is because they have different fields associated with them. So for my video tutorials, I have a URL uh, that's associated with the YouTube link. And then on my blog, I might have, you know, body and then, I don't know, reference to a product. Who knows? Anyways, we're going to go ahead and add a content type here. And we're going to call this premium image. Um, now this is the actual name that's going to be for our content type. And this machine name is referring to what's going to be created in our database in the back end. You may not care about this right now, um, but this could have implications if your site gets very big or you do um, I don't know, different things. Uh, perhaps you have a huge following. So um, just be conscious of any time you see the machine name that automatically gets filled out. Uh, you always have the ability to edit that and it's going to be reflected in your database. The description here is going to be showing up uh, when we actually go to our content page to actually add content and we'll describe what this is. So here I'll just put uh, these are premium images that people will have to pay to download. Just like in D7, you have a few different options here that are set up by default for this content type. Uh, they're all pretty straightforward. They all pretty much make sense. But for those that aren't familiar with Drupal, first thing is your title field label. Um, what this is, is this is going to be uh, the name of this specific content that you create. Um, so as you add new blog posts, as you add new video tutorials, in our case, as we add new premium images, this is what that piece of content is going to be called. It's going to be the title. You can change that. Um, and so I'm going to leave it, but obviously you have the ability to change it here if you'd like to. The preview before submitting, this just, if you're the only one creating content, you might not have to have this, but if you have other people that are doing it, you want to make sure that the content looks properly and that you know that they're looking at it. Here you have the ability to allow them to preview it. You could disable that or you could require it. Again, explanation of submission guidelines. This just is a quick blurb on, um, you know, some rules around what you might actually uh, want to enforce for other users submitting. And this would show up just above your submit button when you're actually creating content. The publishing options are pretty intuitive. Uh, there's some relics here that I don't think are really used too often, but uh, this first published uh, right out of the box, Drupal comes with permissions uh, such that only, um, I think it's authenticated or, or admins can see published and non-published, whereas the public can only see published. 
Uh, so that's why you have this, this checkbox here. Um, the promoted to front page, this again is, I think is part of the relic where um, right out of the box when you install Drupal, and I think it's now a view, um, if you keep the promoted to front page, it will show up on this river of news. And just so you have all your new content that will be added to the front page. I haven't seen too many sites still using this, so I'd be surprised if you do. We'll just leave it as checked off. It doesn't really hurt. Sticky at the top of the list, same thing. It's just kind of like a Boolean flag that just says, yes, this should be at the top of the list. Again, never seen it used. Create new revisions. This is one of the great things about Drupal, especially from a content management system, in that you can create new revisions and keep track of the old revisions um, and kind of what the values were for that. And so this is great if you have uh, users who are adding content with you as well, updating content, you can always create a new revision um, and maintain that history. Display settings, pretty intuitive, whether or not you want to show the author and the date, and then your menu settings. Uh, menus are something we'll cover off later, um, but really this just um, is going to be where your actual content is going to be showing up. And so uh, nothing to really change here. I'm going to go ahead and save and manage fields. And this is really where we get to customize uh, the fields that are associated with our content type. And so you'll see right off the bat, by default, there's always this body. Um, and you can delete this now um, in Drupal 8, which uh, I can't remember if you could in Drupal 7. I'm pretty sure you could remove it. It's, I don't know, it's been a while since I've done that. Um, but typically, uh, very um, back in Drupal 6, you never really used this, and you always kind of wanted to get rid of it. Um, so there's this ability to use body. This is going to be a common field that's used across all content types. So you might want to get rid of it and create your own. Um, I'll leave that to you based on how we do the image field. Uh, so with that, we'll go ahead and add field. Nice thing about D8 is it seems like it's added a few different uh, field types, one of which is kind of nice. It's got this reference to, um, and these would be other entities. Uh, entity is a concept that we'll cover off a little bit later. Um, but really, you can actually add uh, your, your reference to an image right away here. I can't remember if you could in D7 or not. Uh, I think it might have been uh, included, but in D6, it definitely wasn't. Um, and so here, we can just go ahead, uh, hit the image, and then we can add a label. So we'll just call this our premium image. Um, and this label is going to be uh, what the actual field is called. Um, and so we're not actually going to show that to users, so it doesn't really matter. But again, draw your attention to the machine name here. This is what's going to be used in the database. So you'll see reference to, um, I'm not sure if the, the fields are still the same thing in D8 or not, um, but it used to be field data field premium image. Um, and so uh, again, you just want to be conscious of that as you're working with your database. Uh, in case you want to change that up, you can click edit. Um, last thing to note, you, it is possible to reuse an existing field. Um, and the reason why you might want to do that is because every time you create a new field, it will create a database table. Um, and then your database can get uh, kind of large pretty quickly. And so if you have the ability to use the same field, because uh, maybe I have premium images on different content types, um, you can save that, use one table, and then a column will just denote um, uh, where this actually lies. So we're going to go ahead and save and continue. Now, I'm going to pause briefly here because this upload destination, uh, you may only have public files listed here. And the reason for that is because if you go to configuration, um, I'll just do it on this other tab. Configuration, file system. You'll see here that you have the ability to define a public file system, public file base, and then private file system. But here, uh, and this is what I was talking about, the difference between D7 and D8. D7, this used to be a, uh, a field that you would submit and it would save it to the database. Uh, because D8 has gone with the YAML files and is really looking at configuration you know, from a multi-staged environment, so development, staging, production. This is all done now in files. And so to actually update this, you have to edit your settings.php file, what it's referring to here. So just to open my uh, Vim editor and go to settings.php, I'm actually in my site root, which is the 8 sandbox, slash sites slash default Vim settings.php. And if you just do a quick search for private, I'm already on the line, but um, you can see this would be a commented out line for you and it would be settings, file, private, path, and then this might be empty. So for me, I'm going one directory up from my site. So my site's in D, WAMP, www, private, sorry, not private, www, D8 sandbox. I'm going up and then into private. So you would do the same on your server. I'm obviously working locally here. But you would go up from your Drupal directory into a private directory. 
Uh, so you might be in, if you're using Apache, I think it's var www. You could be in the www folder or you could be in www slash my site. And so you just want to go up above your site into a private folder and make sure uh, Drupal, I think, takes care of it. Uh, it'll write an HT access file uh, so that only you, uh, only Drupal will have access to that folder uh, and your server won't have, like Apache won't be able to serve files out of there because you don't want users to get a hold of a URL for an image and be able to download that, especially when we're doing premium images here. Um, so that's what we're doing. Uh, the one thing to note about doing that, uh, the reason why we're going this way is because we're building a brand new site. We don't anticipate a lot of traffic to it. And so uh, if you had a high traffic site and you were serving private files, this might not be the way to do it because it will be slower. Drupal will have to handle all of those requests as opposed to the server doing that. So there are alternatives like using CloudFront from Amazon to actually serve private files. That's something that we can cover off uh, later if there's interest in that. Um, because that's an advanced technique to actually offload some of the load from your server to make sure your site's responsive. All that said, uh, once you go ahead and you add that, you'll see that the private file system will be listed here, but you won't have the default download method. Uh, it won't actually identify a private local file served by Drupal. What you need to do is go back to your configurations. Under development, there will be performance and you're going to clear all the caches. If you're using Drush, you can just use Drush CC. Unfortunately, with the new version of uh, Drupal that was released, Drush broke for me, so I can't do that. So all that to say, this is going to be private files. We're going to make sure that uh, only Drupal is serving them to only people who are authenticated to get them. Default image, uh, this is pretty straightforward. I'm not going to set one up because this is going to be premium image. You should be submitting a new image. Uh, but you could obviously change this if you're using this image field for some other purpose. The alternative text is what screen readers use for accessibility, so I highly recommend you use this. Um, it's just a great thing, especially if you're within Ontario. Uh, it is a requirement now that sites be uh, um, accessible, so this is the first step towards doing that. The title tag is often unused. Uh, a lot of people I see not using this properly, um, but really you should be using this to add some text uh, about your image because Drupal will, or sorry, Google will use that to uh, index and serve uh, images. And so it's a great way for you to get some search engine uh, juice and get some sites, uh, some links back to your site, get some traffic. So use this title tag. Last thing to note here is the allowed number of values. The one thing to note here is the unlimited versus the limited. This changes the database structure. So um, be sure of how, how, many time, how many values you're going to be uploading. So for me, I'm just going to have the one. Um, potentially, we could do multiple. We have different resolutions. But I'm just going to keep it for one now and I'm going to go ahead and save this field. So now that I've got the field set up, um, I've got some kind of higher level settings that I can go ahead um, and define. So the help text would be text that's actually shown underneath the field when you're creating this content. So this should uh, just add this, uh, should be used to add your photos to be sold or something along those lines. Um, and so this is going to be a required field uh, obviously, you have the option to, to make it required, not required. Um, again, default image we just went over. The allowable file extension is pretty intuitive. The file directory, these are subdirectories within the upload directory. Um, and so, I just, you know, we can make this premium image so that we have it, and then they'll be categorized within that private folder. Maximum resolution, again, pretty straightforward, same as the minimum. Maximum upload size, you'll see here that I have a current limit of three megs. Uh, and that's because of my PHP settings. You may or may not have access to this depending upon how your server's set up if you're using shared hosting. Um, but this would be coming from your PHP INI files um, and potentially, yeah, it should just be your PHP INI files, maybe your Apache setting. As we talked about, you can enable the alt field and require it, uh, which I highly recommend you do. And same thing for the title field. So we'll just go ahead and save these. And with that, we now have the premium image um, uh, field added, and we can go ahead and add that content. Um, we could also update the display, but we we're at the 14 minute mark. It doesn't make sense for us to keep doing this. We can, we can talk about this in another video tutorial, uh, potentially the next one, or a theming video tutorial where we'll talk about how we change the layout, look, and feel. But if we go to content now, you can see that I have the ability to add content, and here's our premium image. Remember the description we added here, it's shown. Uh, where we can actually see it, get a little bit of an idea of what this should be used for. I can click on premium image, and here's all of our setup. 
Uh, nice thing about Drupal uh, 8 is that it comes with this uh, lightweight WYSIWYG uh, right out of the box, which is uh, didn't come with Drupal 7, I believe. Uh, but there we go. We have our title, we have our body, and then you can go ahead and choose a file and go ahead and save and publish. So that's the quick introduction to content types in Drupal 8. Not much has changed. The only thing really to note uh, that if you're coming from Drupal 7 was the change to settings.php to enable your private folder. Hopefully this video tutorial helped you. If it did, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know, and hopefully we'll see you for the next one. Thanks very much for watching.